Welcome back to the neighborhood, boys and girls. Our first guest of the night is Sean Hammond from KW Morristown. Welcome to the, the neighborhood, Sean. Thank you for having me. Um, we do a little bit. Look, we start off a little bit of the personal stuff instead of the, the work stuff. So I always believe that no one really raises their hand and says in second grade, I want to grow and be a realtor. <laughs> so uh, tell everybody a little bit about your your pre-realtor life growing up. And if you did anything before real estate, what you did and how you got here. So pretty much before real estate, I was in law enforcement for 10 years. Okay. Um, so uh, just being around people, being mm -hmm. around a, a public servant, it was just second nature to, um, you know, just enjoy people's company yeah. and being able to help people, communicate with people. So it just went hand in hand and, you know, it just, my calling came. Nice. <laughs> where, where were you a, a law enforcement officer? In Jersey. In, in Jersey. Jersey, yes. Okay. And how, you did it for 10 years? Yes. You ever you ever had to fire the weapon no, in any no, service or anything? No, no, no good. No. Thank, that's good. We had one, one of our loan officers, Ben, that was standing outside here. He was, uh, I think, he'd seventeen years, mm -hmm. Camden City cop. Okay. And uh, he, he did have to fire no, his I weapon a couple my times. Service weapon at all, so, <laughs> nice. You know, knock on wood. <laughs> nice, nice. And how long have you been licensed as uh, an agent? It's going on two years now. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And do you tend to gravitate towards a certain client? Is it normally first-time buyers for you or investors or people who are moving from the city to the burbs, anything like that? No, I don't limit myself to any client. You know, as far as attracted to me has been first-time home buyers. Okay. Which um, is, you know, it's just part of, the, um, part of the growing process of becoming a realtor. So it's just, you know. You know, playing as florist, so I don't I don't limit limit myself to any client at all. Nice. And how do you a lot a lot of uh, real estate uh, sales, especially, is promoting yourself? What kind of things do you do social media wise? Are you a TikTok guy? Are you a Facebook guy? How do you promote yourself? How do you get your name out there? Uh, more so on Facebook and okay. um, Instagram. Uh, I do canvas the neighborhoods, walk around, door knock, um, stuff of that nature. That. Um, but I'm also going to start um, implementing with my uh, children sports activities. Okay. You know, talking to other parents, volunteering my time just to help them and just, you know, be a, be a public face. Nice. Are you a part of any professional groups, any networking groups, anything like that? No, I'm not. No? no? Okay. Cool. Um, and so now we'll talk a little bit about your future stuff, where you see yourself. Let's go two years in the future. We're going to, I can't believe I'm saying September. It doesn't seem like it's September. Right? <laughs> it just flew by. We're going to September of 2024. What, uh, what kind of things are we going to see Sean Hammond do between now and September 24? Give me some things you're going to check off, some goals you're going to accomplish. Um, just grow. Just grow um, in this business scale. Help out a lot of people. Help out a, little, a lot of new um, agents that want to um, come into this business because, you know, I came into the blind, blindsided. Nobody, you know, held my hand or anything like that. Just help people that want to find either their um, their niche in real estate mm -hmm. or want to own property and um, educate themselves. Nice. Now, have you had the chance to mentor anyone or help people along? Do you see that as something for you in the future, whether it be a team or maybe a buyer's agent, something like that for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I don't limit, limit myself to any abilities of, you know, growing and, you know, helping others out and, you know, being a sort of a mentor because uh, I think that as you learn, you should give back. It just helps. Sure, sure. Okay. So now let's go to Sean on the personal level. Like, okay. What do you do for your mind, your spirit, your body? What do you do outside of real estate to kind of fill, fill your soul or anything like that? Definitely sports and fitness is okay. number one. I've always played sports since I was little. You know, definitely an athlete person. Um Enjoy quiet time too. Enjoy ha having a good Netflix and nice, chill day here nice, and there for sure. So, um, are you just, are you currently in any like leagues or anything like that? Do you do, or you just go and play and play o open ball or whatever? Uh, not currently. I had to hang up my jersey as far as okay. uh, playing ball because I ruptured my Achilles two years Oof. ago. Oof. So my my Kobe days are over. Okay, <laughs> all right. We, we we do, there's a bunch of crazies that get together at 5 o'clock in the morning on Friday morning and play basketball at LA Fitness, and I suck at basketball. <laughs> uh, I am absolutely the Dennis Rodman kind of person. Hey, man, you give me 20 rebounds, yeah, though. Yeah, I'll get rebounds. I'll set screens. I, that's what I, I'll just run around screen people. You run picks, you can roll, whatever. I, I don't do that, I, but I do play uh, deck hockey. Uh, okay. Because... I, be, I believe I, I, if I stop doing that stuff, I'm going to 
feel real old mm-hmm. real quick. See, now I'll, I'll play if I'm the youngest guy on the court. <laughs> right, right. I, I got the I got the uh, little age gap on where I can still run around and be the fastest uh-huh. guy. But if I'm I'm the old head on the court, no, nah, nah, I, I'm, I, I'm out of that league. <laughs> All right, nice, nice. All right, so then let's talk. Let's go to your personal question. All mm-hmm. right, so we're gonna go. I'm not gonna go sports because we're gonna talk a little bit about sports. All right, let's talk about. If you had the chance to interview any person, alive or dead, throughout history, mm-hmm. who who would that person be? And give me one of the questions that you would ask the, that person. Um, I'm going to have to go back to sports. It would be Michael Jordan. Okay. And my question would be, being as uh, talented and have so much uh, awards come your way, how did you zone in in each and every game and be able to just dominate it, you know? Yeah. Whereas you won three championships, you wanted to go get more. What mm-hmm. fulfilled you to go get more? Like, yeah. what was that drive like when you're already a multimillionaire, you're already uh, a public figure? Like, what drove you to go back in and, you know, put the, put the sneakers on and want to get three more rings? Yeah, you know? he, he was amazing. Did you watch? You did watch The Last Dance probably, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. He, he had that section where he was talking about Terry Catledge. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Playing for the Wizards, mm-hmm. where he came in the locker room and told them that he was talking trash and he said a bunch of stuff. And mm-hmm. then he went and shut Catledge down for the last four games of the series. Exactly. And then t- five years later, it came out that Jordan was lying the whole time. Terry Catledge never talked <laughs> trash. He just needed that motivation. Yeah. And I was watching, I'm thinking to myself, he's the greatest ever. And still, he, he has that burn. He needs that motivation. He, he has that. He was. Amazing because like uh, his his trainer Tim Grover wrote a bunch of books and talks about Michael Jordan and you know, he he says he trained fifteen or twenty better athletes than Michael Jordan but Michael Jordan was the 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 top Kobe was second but Michael Jordan was the top where like three thirty a.m. he's working out yep. he's doing his third workout when everyone's doing their first workout exactly. the minute after the final buzzer rings when they win their title he's literally talking about we're working out on Monday yep. you know what's next that drive I mean I I definitely don't have that I I yearn to have that drive all the time exactly. but it's amazing how much of being great is mental and not physical you mm-hmm. know it's so much mindset and and things like that man so yeah, talent can get you only so far yeah you know it's that work ethic that's going to separate you you know from that talent field yeah and that's that's how i look at life I yeah. say, you can be as talented as you want but my worth ethic my work ethic is going to show you that I'm going to catch you, but not only catch you, surpass you. Yeah, and and I believe that uh, a super talented guy with poor work ethic will always be outdone by someone with not much talent mm-hmm. who's just, you know, dedicated and, and hard hardcore work ethic. So, uh, awesome, Sean. Thank you so much thank for coming in. Thank you for having in. me. I appreciate it. Awesome. We'll be right back with the next guest on Mr. Mortgage's Neighborhood.